The Detroit Drive was going for its fourth straight championship with only the Tampa Bay Storm standing in the way. I'm Fred Hickman and this is ESPN Classics countdown of arena football greatest games. Drive quarterback Arch Schleister did his part by passing for five touchdowns, but was it enough to take home the trophy? After the game here on Classic, don't miss Russell Athletic ESPN Arena Football Monday live tonight on ESPN2. presents Arena Bowl 91. Tonight from Joe Louis Arena, Detroit, Michigan, the three-time defending champion Detroit Drive hosts the Tampa Bay Storm. Novo Bojovic will kick it off, veteran kicker for the drive, and Darren Willis on the return. He has returned one for a touchdown in the regular season, an average 23.8 yards per kick return. We're ready for the 50-yard indoor war in the Arena Bowl. Willis from 9, 8 deep in the end zone to the 10. And good field position for the Storm as they get the football out to the 13-yard line. John Corker, the lineman of the year in the league, made the tackle. Here is Jay Gruden to lead him on the field offensively for the Storm. Gruden, who threw for 1,497 yards and 26 touchdowns in the regular season and led the league in completion percentage at 64%. They show a lot of the short stuff, but they've had big plays that have come because of it. On first and ten, incomplete, intended for Stevie Thomas, who's been his main man recently, as Gruden got dumped. Mullen was covering on the play. The rest of the starters on the offensive line, Gizzy is a second-team all-league player. Thomas, red hot a week ago with seven receptions, three touchdowns. Willis, who you just saw in the kick return, and Bowden, who is a bull as a fullback, and one of three fullbacks that Fran Kersey will put into the football game. It is second down and 10, the ball from the 18-yard line of the Tampa Bay Storm. And Detroit stops that play as Tate Randall, a first-team All-League player out of Texas Tech, makes the tackle. Randall and crew, an outstanding defensive bunch. Corker, as we mentioned, the league defensive lineman of the year. Randall, an all-league player. And it goes on. Mullen was a second-team choice in the secondary. William McClay, a good two-way player as well. And Bruce Clark, a late-season addition, has given him strength up front. Third down and seven, the ball at the 21-yard line. And we'll have a flag. David Evans jumped off sides. going to be against Tampa Bay. Illegal procedure on the offense. Head bob on the quarterback. Three-yard penalty. Explain the head bob. You don't see that called very often, Tony. Well, what, what has happened in that situation, the, the offensive lineman moved his head up and down, and he caused the defense, he caused the linebacker to move across the field. The quarterback cannot make any movements to draw or encroach a man off sides. So it makes it third and 11. And he is back inside his own. He finished third in the league in the regular season with eight sacks. Probably quicker than he was in his NFL days. Well, his coach is saying he's playing better than he's ever played, and I think he may have got off the ball a little too quick on that particular play. As you see, Gruden didn't have time to set up, and John Corker was in the backfield and had a sack on him, but he may have been offside. Have an illegal defense by the linebacker. Five yards, first down. Now, what, what a just... turnaround of plays. Now, here's Corky. You see how quick he is. I mean, even he was off before the ball was even snapped. But a legal defense, a legal setup is, is one of the things that Detroit is very strong in. They've got two outstanding linebackers in Alvin Reddick. And Alvin Reddick is probably lined up in a situation where he was too close to the tackle. You can only get a certain amount of area that you can line up in order to be legal as far as your defense is concerned. You first time arena football watchers. It's a 50 yard field. There is no punting allowed. The walls are in play. And the ball bounces off of them, as are the nets at the end of the field. Incomplete off the hands of Anthony Howard. Mullen was covering on the play on a first and 10 for the 22. And by the way, another thing that you're not used to if you haven't been watching arena ball, that gentleman gets to keep that football. 
thanks to Spalding, every ball that goes in the stands becomes a souvenir, just Tampa, like baseball. Tampa Bay ran an excellent route. They ran what you call a crossing route. They sent Anthony Howard in motion all the way to the opposite side of the field, and he ran a crossing pattern, and Gruden missed the pass. He doesn't normally do that, does that. He throws for 61% of his pass, and he has to connect in order for them to be successful. Second and 10 for Gruden. Plenty of time. He got good protection. Underthrown. Looking for Thomas in the vicinity, or actually for Tracy Perkins. Rand Kersey, 9 and 2. First year back in coaching after eight years out of the business. Former head coach at Kentucky, once at the University of Tampa. The AD there as recently as 1989. And Tim Markin, the winningest coach in arena football, 30 and 7, has never lost in a championship game. He's going for his fourth title. He's won two in Detroit and one in Denver. But well, Gruden's one for four for three yards. He's got to improve on that statistic. Third and ten. Gruden deep. And it is complete inside the five-yard line to Darren Willis out of Arizona State. Randall makes the tackle. First and goal inside the five for the storm. And that's why Darren Willis is the best athlete on their ball club. He runs a corner pattern. And the key thing is look at the protection Gruden's getting. But Tate Randall is all over Darren Willis, and he goes up and makes a catch. That's what you call a great catch. Any kids around there, you saw he used his body, but he caught the ball with his hands. That's an outstanding catch. Darren Willis, 5'11", 180-pounder. He had three catches for 76 yards in the victory over Denver last week. Coming back off a knee injury. Great return man, and has turned into a good offensive player, as well as a very sound defensive player. First and goal for the fourth. Willis. Did he cross the goal line in time? I don't think so. It's going to be a second and inches from inside the one-yard line. If Detroit's going to win, Mullen, Gary, Gary Mullen's going to have to come up and lay a hit on him. Here he's in a zone. He, he's got to hit. He's got to hit Darren Willis on that play. When you're in the zone, you got to make that guy pay for that ball. As a result, he missed the tackle, and, and, and Darren Willis dropped the ball. But he's got to pay for coming in, in Gary, Willis, Gary Mullen's territory. Tampa Bay, thanks to a penalty, has then moved right down the field. Second and goal, Gruden. Touchdown score! Jay Gruden with a TD. He scored twice in the regular season, once here in Detroit. Well, that might be the most important play of the season right there for Tampa Bay. They got the ball in their first series. They experienced a few, a little bit of bad weather, but they were able to bring the ball down and score. And here's a look at it right here. It's, just, it's a quarterback keeper. It's designed for Gruden to take the ball in. They had a, they had a the offensive line stacked to the right, and he just went behind all his strength. So Tampa goes on top. Hickert with a kick after. Paul Hickert's kick is good, and it's seven to nothing, Tampa Bay. 9.45 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back in a moment. He's got the talk. Stand clear and you won't get hurt. He's got the walk. He's got the girl. Bring home John Wayne in 48 of his best movies on DVD. Own them Tuesday. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. So how'd the testing go? Well, low-quality discount gasoline's gonna leave behind engine gunk. I hate engine gunk. I know you do. While shell stop, gunky build up to help engines perform at their best. Still won't turn right, huh? Not gonna happen. When you take it off, you're gonna like what you see. Scotch Blue Painter's Tapes. Goes on easy, comes off clean, leaving professional paint lines. Looking good, you got to agree. Scotch Blue Painters Tapes for delicate or multi surfaces. Go on, take it all. Buy three, get one free, huh? Yep. So, how much are you jacking up the price of the three tires to make the fourth tire look free? I gotta ask. We guarantee the lowest price on every tire we sell. <laughs> What's the cost of the fourth tire? Come on. Buy three tires at Pep Boys and the fourth one's free. Any brand, any size, for any vehicle. It's almost too good to be true. So it's free, free? Free, free. Why does it only say free then, Jack? Buy three and get the fourth tire free at Pep Boys. This week only. I know where he's heading. Don't worry, I'll be there. Now playing at SeaDoo.com. We know what men like. New Mitchum Smart Solid. Powerful protection, unbeatable against white residue. 
Wow, let's see that again. For powerful all-day protection that doesn't come off on your shirt, be a smart Mitchum man. Gruden puts the storm on top. Detroit concerned about his running, but not necessarily in these situations. They're thinking of more of the scramble and a pass situation. Uh, un undoubtedly, what, what Tampa did, they went to their strength. They lined ahead of what's called an offset line. They had four or five guys lined on that side, and Gruden went to his strength, and he took a quarterback sneak into the end zone. Tampa Bay with the lead, and Hickard's kickoff to LaFrance. Bats it to keep it in play. And brought down the six-yard line by Andre Bowden out of Fayetteville College in North Carolina. 6'2", 238 pounds. And Art Schleister brings him on. Schleister, the league MVP in 1990. Second in the league this year on the all-league team. He was second in touchdown passes with 33. Second in yardage with 1,888 as he completed 120 of 264, like 47%. They like to go up top in Detroit, and you might look for him to do it right off the bat. Well, we're talking to Fran Kersey. He's thinking about going up top to Gary Mullen. they got a hook and go, and they've got him beat bad. Mullen for the 10. He stepped out of bounds inside right at the 10-yard line. Oh! Okay, Tim Markin design a play. This is what you call a perfectly executed hook and go. Here's a look at it right now. You see Sleeser pump, and he lays it over the top. Mullen had ran a hook route. Riley Ware bit for the hook route, and Mullen was up top for the score. Outstanding play, outstanding route. You can't run it any better. It was textbook style. Mullen runs five yards, he hooks, he pump fakes, and he takes off deep. First down and goal from the 10-yard line. Schleister, good protection. Looking for Mullen! for a game tonight, folks. i tell you what happened. Mullen runs a crossing pattern. Look at this. They're all tangled up. Five guys are tangled up, and then Mullen just breaks loose and gets in for the touchdown. Arch Meister says, all right. And he is fired up. The great thing about that play was that Mullen wide open, rather than drill it in there, he showed touch. He showed composure. And that's the mark of a great quarterback. He just laid that ball up. Bojovic had to hesitate and then misses the point after, but there is a flag thrown. In trying to block kicks, you must rush from inside the end position. You can't spin and come from the outside and run the football. Number 29 on the defense. After this is to the goal. So they'll get another opportunity, and that's the call. And when you define an illegal outside rush, is when, when you attempt to block a kick, you cannot rush from the outside of any of the offensive ends, and that's exactly what happened on Ware's part. Here's Boyovic out of Central Michigan. 5'10", 180. You Last week, slapped the equipment manager for Albany <laughs> after the equipment manager squirted him with water during the game. It was quite an evening here in Detroit. Well, you got to wonder if Nova's got uh, any of that garlic in his sock for luck this week. Regular season, he was 42 or 58 in the PAT category, and this one is good. So, they take advantage of the penalty, and we're even with 7-18 to go in the first period. Our score is 7-7. The Haynes Perfect Tea. Perfect layered. Perfect on its own. Perfect, no matter how you wear it. Thanks for letting me borrow your sweater. Boo, large-headed friend. Red beer! Drink responsibly. AC Milan, fueled by the fire of Sador and the dazzling play of Kaká. Liverpool, armed with two dangerous weapons, Crouch and Gerard. The UEFA Champions League Final, Wednesday at 2 Eastern on ESPN2. ESPN Classic is opening up the boxing vault. Now with rarely seen fights. Featuring some of the biggest names in boxing. Classic Night at the Fights, 8 p.m. weeknights, only on ESPN Classic. Hey, these guys joined my team and lost weight. Mike Golick, 51 pounds. Scott Conover, 100 pounds. 
Hey, Marino, I lost 32 pounds. Get real results with Nutrisystem for men. You know, my wife told me I'm not as disgusting to her as I used to be. Call or go online now to get four weeks of awesome food. And through this special offer, you'll automatically receive your order once every four weeks. And you can get an extra two weeks of meals free. Burgers, pizzas, lasagna, pot roast. Our secret is the breakthrough science of the glycemic advantage that separates good carbs from bad. Now carbs are no longer off limits. Nutrisystem worked for me. Trust me, it'll work for you. About 10 bucks a day gets you four full weeks of rib sticking meals. Pick up the phone and lose weight. Order our four-week men's program and you can get an extra 14 breakfasts, lunches, dinners, and desserts. A full two weeks of food absolutely free. Call now to find out how. Boyovic ready to kick it off. 7-18 to go first quarter. Bill Land, Tony Hill, and Howard Balls are with you here on Prime Network for Arena Bowl 91. Two possessions and two touchdowns. And reminds you that the clock does not stop in arena football until the final minute of the half and the final minute of the ball game for incompletions, penalties, first downs, and chain movement and that type of thing. Perkins stepped out of the end zone, so it'll be a touchback out to the five-yard line. Tampa Bay will get possession again. Well, just about the way we expect it. Detroit likes to go up top to Marcus says to win in this league. You got to go deep and deep and deep again. And Frank Kersey, a little bit different philosophy of kind of pick away, see what's open, and take advantage of that. It's worked for both fellas. Yeah, you know, the key right now, especially with in Tampa's area, is the protection they've given. Here's a look at Detroit's drive. 44 yards, both plays to Mullen. 10 on the last one, 34 on the first. First to 10, and up the middle, carrying the football, Lynn Bradford, second in the league and rushing on the year with 261 yards. Dwayne Dixon made the tackle. Detroit has such an outstanding defense. They, they bring a lot of men. They bring the linebacker. Eric Anderson is playing number 33. You'll see him blitzing almost every play. And in order for Tampa Bay to be successful, they're going to have to stop that rush of Hennings, Harris, Bruce Clark, Dixon. They've got a lot of, mate lot of material. Second and eight on the seven. Bradford tackled at the 13-yard line. He'll be too shy of the first down. Flint Fleming, a second league All-Arena League player, second team All-League player out of North Dakota State making the stop. Well, that's the way you stop a rush. You see 33, Alvin Reddick go all by himself, but it's a designed screen. And that's the way you slow down a rush. You go screens and draws to keep those guys honest, to keep them at home. Third down and three, they call it. Little look. <laughs> well, that was 26 to 26. What happens is Tracy Mur Perkins goes in motion. David Evans is covering Stevie Thomas, and he comes off and just makes a play. An outstanding play by David Evans. And they'll have to kick it away. Remember, no punting in arena football, so it's a field goal attempt as Hickert will set up for this one at the seven-yard line. 50 plus yards and it comes off to the France. He's very dangerous on the return. Out of bounds. The market near the 11 yard line. So the Detroit defense holds Tampa on its second possession and now Detroit trying to take the lead with five minutes to go in the first. Is that bulky wallet bursting your pocket? Is your money a disorganized disaster? You need the Smart Money Clip, the smart new way to organize your cash and credit cards neatly, completely. Smart Money Clip is made of spring action stainless steel and adjusts to grip a single dollar bill or a billfold of 30 bills. Flip the clip and the credit card holder grips credit cards, bank cards, your license, up to five cards in all. Remove the cards and watch. Even a single slim credit card can't slip from its steel grip. There's never been anything like it. The secret is the patented smart card channel that securely grips even a single credit card. Bulky wallets attract pickpockets, but Smart Money Clip is so sleek and streamlined it slips easily into any pocket. With Smart Money Clip, it's all at your fingertips. Neat, organized, safe, and secure. Plus, it holds business cards, receipts, and much more. Lightweight and compact, it fits any purse. You need the Smart Money Clip. There's never been anything like it. My wallet was a mess, and it took forever to find the right card. 
Now everything's right at my fingertips. Those rubber bands around my husband's wallet look so tacky. The smart money clip holds it all. It was the perfect gift. I ripped a hole in my pocket with that old bulky wallet. The smart money clip, it's thin, holds all my cash, my credit cards. It's incredible. Now, order the handsome stainless steel smart money clip for the special price of only $19.95. But wait, you also get the smart pocket as a free gift. The patented clip locking mechanism clips on your belt, keeps keys and cash safe and secure. Order the smart money clip for only $19.95 and get the smart pocket as your free gift. Look again, even a single credit card stays secure in smart money clip steel grip. Order now. To order your smart money clip and free smart pocket, call 1-800-360-1802 or send $19.95 plus $5.95 shipping to the address on your screen. Call 1-800-360-1802 or order online at www.smartmoneyclip.com. Call now. It's back. Oh, look at that! The legendary American Gladiators, weeknight 7 Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN Classic. Welcome back to Joe Lewis Arena. Late in the first quarter, Detroit dealt Tampa Bay a blow when former OSU Buckeye Arch Leister hit George LaFrance for La Touchdown. Late in the second quarter, under pressure and donning sports' ugliest uniforms, Jay Gruden found Stevie Thomas in the end zone from 13 yards out to tie the game at 14. On the next possession, the Storm could not find shelter from Allen Reddick as he plowed into the end zone from two yards out. With the score now 21-14 Detroit, we resume our coverage with exactly one minute remaining in the opening half here on ESPN Classic. One minute to go, and yes, that's the one-minute timeout here in arena football. And now in the final minute of this half, the clock will stop on incompletions, first downs, penalties and such. So that final minute could take a long time after not stopping the clock for the first quarter and then all but this final minute of the second quarter. Bill Lamb along with Tony Hill and Howard Balzer from Pro Football Weekly joining us here for the title game in Detroit. First and 10 from the 12 for Tampa Bay and flags are thrown. Looks like John Ralph over there. Uh, they call him Psycho. He's one of the strongest guys on the team. He's a big, strong guy. He's played in numerous college ball games. On the defense, number 62, three-yard penalty. Yeah, big John Rowe. He's an outstanding football player. He's played in numerous bowl games, and he's, he's accustomed to playing these kind of games himself. He's, uh, he played in the Peach Bowl, the Gator Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and, and numerous AFL bowls. Tim Markham. What a busy guy. He was in the World League of American Football and actually missed a game because of the playoffs with New York, New Jersey earlier this year. At the University of Florida last year, is year out of arena football. Gruden on first and goal, and it is knocked away in the end zone. Thomas claiming he was interfered with. He's David claimed, Evans covering. He's claiming he was hailed, and he, he may have a case on that because David Evans was never looking at the ball. Here's a look at it, and you'll see Dave Evans looking at look at him. He's holding on to him. He's grabbing Stevie Thomas' arm before the ball is thrown in. And that is clearly pass interference. Here's a look at the crossing pattern. Gruden lays the ball up. You see Stevie has his arm up, and David Thomas, David Evans is not even looking at the receiver or the quarterback. He's looking right at the receiver, and as a result, he gets away with a good one. Second down, yeah. and it is incomplete or he stepped out of bounds. Complete, he slid out of bounds at the five-yard line. Relk had the pressure on Gruden. Well, Detroit got a favor right there because Caleb was wide open on that play, and I could have skipped in there with my eyes closed if the ball would have, I would have been given enough time to run in there. What a beating Gruden took that time from John Relk. One of the few players that has played every year of arena football. And now it is third down and three from the five. Third and three from the five for the Storm with 49 seconds to go in the half. This could be a very big play. It can either turn into be three points or seven. It could be a big change in the game. Detroit leading 21-14. Gruden. And off the fingers of Thomas, but a flag throw. Behind Thomas, it would have been a sensational grab if he'd have held on. Apparently the penalty is going to be against the drive. 
But Corker's getting up slow. Outside's defense, number 88, three-yard penalty. And that's all they needed. First down and goal to go. Well, John Corker's got to be a little frustrated. He's doing everything necessary to get to Gruden. He's been given, he's been presenting a lot of pressure. However, they've had costly turnovers, costly penalties, and as a result, he's getting a little frustrated. Tim Markham, seen his lead leading defensive unit Root for 14 points here, and another seven may be on the way. Third down now, and one to go. So they didn't quite make the first of the penalty. But they get the touchdown for Bradford. Lynn Bradford, who scored seven times in the regular season on the ground, pulls his way in to pull the storm within one. And that's to say the least. That was what you call a tremendous bulldozer move. He just ran over three or four guys, and he could be labeled the bulldozer the way he ran over these guys. Outstanding run on Bradford's part. So Bradford gets a touchdown run along with his interception tonight. And now a chance to tie it up for Hickert and Tampa Bay. Kick is good. What a ball game here in Arena Bowl 91. We're even again at 21. Maroon has scored on the ground. He's thrown a touchdown pass to Thomas, and Bradford has scored for Tampa Bay and for Detroit. Mullen has scored, LaFrance on a TD reception, and Redding on the ground. This is a big play by Lynn Bradford right there because one of the key concerns of Tampa Bay was, was being able to stay up with Detroit in the first half, and they've been, there, they've been up there man for man, point for point. It's been an outstanding game in the first quarter, first half, rather. Howard Balzer of Pro Football Weekly, who's seen all of the Arena Bowl games, is this what you anticipated coming in here tonight? Well, I'm kind of surprised at all the mistakes that Detroit is making, and not only the two turnovers, but virtually every series they've had a penalty somewhere along the line that has really hurt them. The first series where Tampa scored, there was the illegal defense right there. Even if Bradford doesn't score, he makes the first down. The, the penalty on the offsides hurt them. They've, they've just been beating themselves so far, and yet it's still only a tie game. They could have a much bigger lead if they hadn't been making these mistakes. It has not been vintage Detroit because last week they had a similar problem. They didn't convert on one third down of the game, yet they won by two over Albany. Here's LaFrance on the return. And he gets it out all the way to the 21-yard line. George LaFrance. Tackled by Gizzy. And Gizzy's an interesting story. He's a medical student at the University of Pennsylvania going back for his second year of med school and said, what a release it is to come out and play football for four months. And he said, get out all your frustrations. He said, then you go back, take the helmet off, and if there's still something left up there, try to go back to work at school. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about uh, Gizzy is the fact that he was named Philadelphia High School Scholar Athlete of the Decade. So you know this guy's no dummy by all means. There's LaFrance and some of his totals. Tampa Bay, even with the drive. It's 21-21 and 33 seconds to go here in the first half, and a timeout is called. Fran Kersey, who you really got to tip your cap to, Tony, so many times it takes a while for a coach who hasn't been in arena football to adjust to the league and the different rules and everything else. But Kersey and his crew learned right off the get-go. They lost their opening game to Orlando and then bounced back. And he said it was a real learning process, but they made the adjustments quicker than some have. I think you got to attribute that to Grant Kersey and his staff. Number one, he considers this league somewhat of a mixture of, of college and professional. You've got to do some excellent recruiting, and you have to make adjustments, in which they have done very well with Fonte, uh, Larry Carrick, uh, Carrick. Yeah, Kuhurich. They've done a very good job as far as recruiting and, and putting this team together. And one of the great things he says that this team is a team. You know, you find a lot of individuals on most teams, but on this, on this particular squad, everyone, everyone gets along very well, and this has been a delight for him. Storm and Reed Bennett, another story behind him. He was going into insurance sales when he got the call. How'd you like to play a little indoor <laughs> football? And he said, I guess that insurance career can wait. Four plays at 23 yards for the last Storm drive. Bradford capping it off on a three-yard run that he bulldozed his way into the end zone with. Well, if you read better, what a better way to sell insurance when you got all these football players where you can hand them out policies. I'm sure the wives would appreciate it. That's right. So now, here's what Schleister and crew have got facing up. First and 10 at their own 21 with 33 seconds to go in the France in motion. Plenty of time for Schleister to Dixon in bounds and then stepped out at the 19-yard line. 
so he'll get the first down it will appear. Well, if you're if you're a fan of, of any receiver, Dixon it has which demonstrates excellent footwork. It keeps his feet inbounds as you see and makes the catch. That's excellent concentration and excellent work. I'm sure some of his students back in Florida are pretty proud of what he's taught them. His fourth year here with Detroit. In 88, he was the Iron Man of the Year in the league. Out of the University of Florida. 6-2 to Wayne Dixon. And it is a first and ten at the 19 of the storm for Detroit. Schleister. Over the hands of Mullen, brother LaFrance. I think he was looking to throw that away. Well, I think he, the beginning. I think he was going for LaFrance and found, found himself with a, it, the Tampa was in a zone defense and they were running right into the strength of Tampa's defense. And he just threw the ball a little too far, which was really a blessing in disguise because that ball would have been picked off by Darren Willis. Sometimes you get caught up with all the offensive numbers that this league presents, but realize that these are the two best defensive teams in the league that made it the championship game. It still comes down to how often can you stop the other guy? The France in motion on the second and ten. And spreading around this time to Mullen. He's been a big hero early on with an interception and a touchdown. Where knocked him out of bounds with 18 seconds to go, but it's a first and goal to go situation now for the drive. Mullen's a premier receiver in this league. Everything he catches with his hands, and he's a he's a joy and delight to watch. Where has got his hands, he's got his hands filled up today, and I'd hate to be covering Mullen today because he's having an outstanding game. Mullen, 10 touchdown receptions in the regular season. He had one against Albany in the playoffs last week. There's Schleister's numbers so far. First and goal for the seven. Clock moving now, 17 seconds. Schleister all day. Knocked away, intended for Mullen in the end zone. <laughs> and where on his back? Mullen has four catches for 91 yards already, but I tell you what, where? Upset, and it shows by the way he got up on Mullen. He pushed his face into the ground. I have a feeling there is going to be something going on between these two all game. Watch when where where it gets up. He just throws his face mask in the mouth and says, "Hey, I'm close by you, and I'm going to be close to you the whole game." Second down and goal from the seven with 14 seconds to go in the half. 21-21, Detroit and Tampa Bay for the Arena Bowl and the championship here in 1991. Anderson. Bended inside the five as he rolls down on the three yard line and a timeout in point with seven seconds to go. Darren Willis came in to undercut Eric Anderson out of Millican University. And he made a big play because Eric Anderson would have took that in the end zone. Everyone was looking for a pass. They went with their sweep. Student body right as you see everyone going to the right. And the only guy who can make the play is Darren Willis and he gets down low and makes the play. Great play by Darren Willis. Eric Anderson. Played with Pittsburgh, this Tampa Bay franchise was in Pittsburgh before this year, and he played with them in 89 and 90. He sells for Allied Van Lines here in Detroit, so he said it's a matter of going to practice in the morning, early afternoon, and then going to real work, as he calls it, <laughs> after that, and then, of course, full time in the offseason. So you talk about an Iron Man, he is really an Iron Man. And believe me, I played professional football for 10 years, and on Mondays, I didn't even want to walk after a game. And this guy's got to go to work all week long and then practice and then have to go to work again. That's what you call Iron Man of Football League. Earlier today here on Prime Network, bad weather forced us to preempt the GTE U.S. Hardcore Tennis Championships from Indianapolis. We'd like to update you on those results. In the semifinal, number one, Boris Becker won over David Wheaton, 7-6-6-4. And Pete Sampras won in the other semi, 6-3-7-6 over Jim Courier. Becker and Sampson will meet for the finals on NBC tomorrow. Third down and goal from the two-yard line with seven seconds to go for Detroit as they try to go back on top. Long count for Schleesen. He keeps. Flags are thrown, and he goes nowhere. Schleister scored eight touchdowns in the regular season. And you got to wonder, was he trying to draw the defense of offsides? It's a big call here. Illegal procedure number 27 on the offense. You know, Detroit has not been in sync with that man in motion, LaFrance, 
as often as they normally are. And I know that's a real difficult thing to do to keep the timing when you can loop the man as you can arena football, but normally they're a little smoother at it than they've been tonight. Well, Howard brought up a very interesting situation. Detroit is not playing the Detroit type of ball. They've had a tremendous amount of turnovers. They're used to they're used to presenting turnovers. However, they're they they are creating. They're not creating turnovers. They are presenting turnovers, and, and that's not the mark of a championship team, especially a team that's used to being in this type of situation. Detroit with a timeout, and they're going to go for the field goal attempt here because the penalty was declined, so it is fourth down, and that means Boyovic will come on for the field goal attempt and set up just shy of the 10-yard line. The end zones are eight yards deep in arena ball. You see Witkowski, the backup quarterback, John Witkowski out of Columbia is the holder here in this situation for Novo Boyovic for 18-yard field goal to Jeff Boyovic in the regular season. We mentioned 9 of 34, just 26%. Let's some punch ones. Detroit has won the close games this year. Last week, they won by two over Detroit. They beat Orlando in overtime, 43-40. And they beat Albany at Albany, 43-42 in the regular season with time expired. So Boyovic, actually a 17-yard field goal attempt with three seconds to go here in the first half and a chance to give Detroit the lead in intermission. Doesn't matter, recovers. Well, we've got flags thrown again. So we may have another play here before the end of the half. That's a very dangerous situation, Tony, because of the Nets being in play in arena football. Most people think, all right, three seconds to go. If he makes it, they take the lead. If he misses, half is over. Not necessarily. Well, that's an important miss right there. We have an illegal zone on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. We'll have an untimed down. First down, Tampa Bay, untimed down. So now Tampa Bay has one opportunity. Illegal zone on a kick. <laughs> That's an interesting one right there. Illegal zone on a kick on the offensive team. Well, we've got the commissioner up here to define that one. He's chuckling himself. I think that's one he put in his rule book. Well, I think Nova left the garlic at home this week, you guys. Uh, we're going to be talking to Commissioner Jim Foster at halftime about expansion that is ahead for arena football after a great season here in 1991 and record-setting numbers attendance-wise. Never been more popular and big things on the horizon for arena ball. Jim Markham, I think, wondered about this explanation himself. But here's the deal. They'll get a free play from their own eight-yard line, and it's just a 50-yard field, so let's see what Gruden does with it. Completed to 25. Spins. He'll score. Oh, no, no, hold on. Oh, no. What a run. Stevie Thomas takes it in for a touchdown. Oh, I don't believe it. He told me he was nervous before the game. He said he was ready, but I'm a little nervous. Whoa. Yeah, that was one of those situations where every player in the Detroit defense. I can't believe that Tampa Bay, there's Bob. Grease, the man with a striped shirt, Stevie hands, and the owner of this Tampa Bay franchise. There's Bob Grease looking for some of his fellow Tampa Bay friends who made the trip. And Tampa Bay has stunned this Detroit crowd. Here is the kick for Hickert. It's 27 21. Good, 28-21, and Tampa Bay scores with no time on the clock. Thomas, how does Detroit not make the tackle? Well, I'll tell you what, this is a heads-up play by Thomas, but Mullen doesn't make the play. He tries to tackle the ball, and Thomas said, hey, I'm going to score. And this is what you call the war on the floor, and I'm going to score. Great run by Thomas. I would those, not. It was one of those prevent defenses. Everybody was just so back. Had, a, had some momentum behind him. No one could do anything about it. Well, I tell you what, when I was playing with the Dallas Cowboys, we had a great defense, but when we went to that prevent defense, I just wanted to shut my eyes and just pray that we'd be able to stop And as a result, here's the same thing that happens. The prevent defense gives up a touchdown. I remember we were playing San Francisco. We went to the prevent defense, and, and Dwight Clark makes a great catch at the end of the game, and we lose the game. That prevent defense just drives me up a wall. 
Tampa Bay with the 42-yard touchdown pass at the buzzer, and it's 28-21 at intermission. Dysphasia. It's a crippling facial disorder that can disfigure a normal, healthy face for a lifetime. What causes dysphasia? The shock of getting your auto insurance premium. Don't let dysphasia happen to you. Call Eastwood Insurance. Eastwood has the lowest monthly payment, lowest down payment, and rates as low as $29 a month. Don't let dysphasia happen to a face you love. Shoulda, coulda, Eastwood. So do what 20,000 drivers do every month. Call Eastwood. On long road trips, hardworking sportscasters like us love Motel 6. We save big and we get much needed R&R. &R. Sure do, Bob. You know, it's nice to get off the air, relax, and just be ourselves. You swimming in that? Yeah, I'm feeling it, Bob. We'll leave the light on for you. with everything you love never loses its thrill. What will you discover? Go RVing. Visit GoRVing.com for a free video and see an RV dealer. Every weekend, ESPN Classic picks one sport. I don't believe it! And gives you a full day of classic action. This weekend, it's a real classics movie marathon. Sunday at 1, only on ESPN Classic. the 50-yard indoor war, the 1991 Arena Bowl in Detroit. Hometown drive on the short side, 28-21 at halftime. Bill Antonio Hill and Howard Balls are with you here at intermission. And take a look at that final play that of all the crazy plays we saw this year, we saw a bunch of them, Tony. I don't think there are any, any wilder than this one. Yeah, but the great thing about Tampa Bay, they had a chance to throw it in the end zone, but no, they elected to throw it short and give Stevie Thomas a chance to make a play. And here it is, you see Mullen makes, he goes, he tackles the ball and doesn't tackle the receiver. You see David Evans does the same thing as the score. You've got to tackle this guy and make a play. This is what costs you the ball game. This, that seven points right there can make the difference in this game. It's almost as if each player thought his teammate in that sequence was going to make the tackle so I can go for the ball. Well, you, you look at both of these turnovers, for, uh, turnover ratios for both clubs. Detroit is plus a, plus nine for the season. Uh, Tampa's even, and they both have minus. They're both in the minus area. They're going to have to improve in order to win. Tampa Bay owner Bob Grease and his father also had part ownership of the Cleveland Browns of the National Football League. Bob with the coat and tie there. As they helped turn this franchise around. What a success story in Tampa Bay, leading the league in attendance, setting new attendance records for single game and for the season. They averaged 17,094 at the Suncoast Dome. And what a boost to the Suncoast Dome when they found out that Major League Baseball was not coming to the Bay Area. All right, about ready for the second half. I'd like to ask Howard Balzer, Pro Football Weekly, you look at the previous Arena Bowl championships, Detroit's won three in a row. Have they ever had one as tight as this? <laughs> Not at all. In fact, the last two games have been, a, they've won by a combined score of 90 to 53 in the last two games. And th this is so far, there's no question, the best Arena Bowl there's been. The, the, one, the one that was close to this one was Detroit and Chicago a few years ago in the Rosemont Horizon. That game went back and forth. It was a low scoring game. Detroit eventually won 24 13. We're ready for the kickoff second half as the drive. I will get the football down by seven. Here's LaFrance. Looking for a hole to the 15 and brought down at the 16 or 17 yard line. Detroit winning championships last year over Dallas 51 27, over Pittsburgh in 89, which is now this Tampa franchise 39 26, and then the Chicago victory in 88. Well, that's what you call a kicker earn his money. If Paul Hickard wouldn't have made this play, LaFrance would have went all the way. A great outstanding play by Paul Hickard. He was bored with the engineering and asked 
Baltimore Triumph, and now he's at now he's at Tampa Bay. He won't get bored in this league. <laughs> First and ten, the 16, the France in motion for the drive. Schleister. Same play they opened the game with Mullen, and nearly intercepted as Tampa was not about to be taken that time. Riley Ware covering on the play. Oh, outstanding coverage by Wiley, uh, Riley Ware. He had 29 all over Gary Mullen, and there was just no way that he was going to allow Gary Mullen to make that play. That just shows how much confidence Mullen had, uh, Sleaster has in his receivers. He knew that Gary Mullen was covered like a blanket, but he's going to throw it up high and give him a chance to make the play. And that just shows the confidence he has in his players. Mullen, touchdown pass in the first half and an interception. Here's LaFrance in motion. Second and ten. LaFrance across midfield at the 23-yard line. George LaFrance tackled by Roland Crawford. France has been working in computer sales while being here in Detroit. His wife and child are here from Arizona. France runs a hook route right there. You see Crawford underneath makes the play. Outstanding time with excellent concentration by Le France because the ball was tipped and he knew he was going to get hit and he makes a great play. And the tip was by jo uh, Keith Browner. Browner got a hand on it and Le France able to come down with it. First and 10 at the 24. 13 15 to play third quarter. Reddick. 20 and he scoops across the 15 for the first down. Riley Ware making the stop, but Redding gets 10 on one pop. Now when you say pound for pound, the toughest guy you ever met, you watch, watch Alvin Reddick on this sweep. He delivers to Riley Ware. Here he comes. He says, here, you take this shot. And I'll tell you what, Riley Ware, he'll think twice about making that tackle next time Alvin Reddick comes around that end. And an arena ball, the fullback linebacker gets hit or hits on every play. First and ten. is number 44. Bo Wright comes storming in, and Alvin Reddick does what you call great pickup blocking, and he allows Leacher the opportunity to get that ball off. Great kick by McClay, but the, what made that play was Alvin Reddick picking up the blitz. Boyovic could tie it up. It's 28-27. Inside 12 minutes to go, third period. He misses. Tampa Bay stays on top, 28-27. But they came out, Detroit, and established themselves on the opening possession. We'll be back with a kickoff. Left here. Morning, gentlemen. So how'd the testing go? Well, low-quality discount gasolines can leave behind engine gunk. I hate engine gunk. I know you do. While shells stop, gunky build up to help engines perform at their best. Still won't turn right, huh? Not gonna happen. ESP Field. Sweet D. Whitaker. From one classic knockout to the next. That's it! It's all over! It's all over! Classic Night at the Fights, 8 p.m. weeknights, only on ES. I got it because I couldn't take dial up another second. I got it because I get all the speed I need. It's like boom, I click, I'm connected. There are more reasons than ever to switch to Verizon High Speed Internet. It's up to 21 times faster than dial up and costs less than most cable companies. You want to download a file, it's right there. We send pictures to Grandma all the time. Finally, no. Network over 100 million people rely on every day. So call one 866 was a terrific five-yard run by Stevie Thomas as Reddick finally brought him down. That might, that might answer our question how he scored that touchdown. He avoided six men right here without even make, giving a move. This guy's got tremendous leg strength. Stevie Thomas, who was a sensational high school quarterback and then became a receiver at Bethune-Cookman, played for Larry Little. That name ought to be familiar, the one-time great with the Miami Dolphins. And then tryouts with the Tampa Bay Bucks in the NFL. Number one pick from Orlando in the World League. Been injured off and on this year. No question about his talent. First and ten from the seven for the Storm. Bruden escapes a man. And he's 
slides for about four. See where they mark him going out of bounds near the 13. Redding and McClay covering on the play. Tim Markham. Must have said the right words at halftime. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that Coach Tim Markham's got to concern himself with is, is the endurance with it in this game. Last time they played, he said one of his major problems was he left the guys in too long. You see Corker, you see Bruce Clark, and they, Alvin Reddy, they've got their hands on their hips. Right there's a look at Corker with his hands on his hips. These guys might be getting tired, and if they give Gruden the time to throw the ball, they could find themselves in trouble. Tampa Bay, on the other hand, shuttles in shifts. Gruden from second and four going deep for Thomas. Covered on the play by Randall. Uh, I think oh, Stevie was looking at Tate Randall rather than that ball. Uh, Stevie's an outstanding player, but great plays are plays that you go for that you don't think you have a chance of making. Jay Gruden looks up. 10-10 to go third period. And there's 20,357 here. A Joe Lewis Arena, Arena football attendance record. An arena bowl attendance record 20,357 has sold out Joe Lewis Arena here in Detroit, Michigan. And as far as they're concerned, the good guys are down. Tampa Bay leading by one of the ball. Third and four. Good. That's Willis. And needs a block. He got the tap. Oh, what a play. Touchdown. Touchdown. Are there some big play players on this team? Unbelievable. Willis and Stevie Thomas are unbelievable. who makes the catch goes one way. You'll see him give a left foot and he breaks to the right and he gets a great block from Sue, Stevie Thomas, and he takes it in the end zone. So Willis gets the touchdown on a 37-yard play from Gruden. 9 2 to go, third quarter. Don't even think about going away. 35-27. You look in the mirror. Do you see love handles, flab, and bulges? You've done hundreds and hundreds of sit-ups without seeing the results you want. Hi, I'm Jamie Gallo. I'm over 40 years old. Two years ago, I had a baby. And no one could get my abs back. But now I'm in the best shape of my life. How do I keep a lean, sexy waistline at my age? With the ab roller system. The gentle rolling action of the ab roller helps abdominals faster than you've ever dreamed possible. And with a contoured cushion that supports your neck, virtually eliminating back and neck strain. You lose two dress or pant sizes in 30 days, guaranteed, or your money back. I use the ab roller and just look at what it's done for my abs. This is what you need to help lose that stubborn belly flab and get great abs. One, you need a proven abdominal machine that's easy to use and isolates your abs. This is it, the ab roller, used by professionals and celebrity trainers around the world. Two, you need the Abs Made Easy exercise routine designed to target and sculpt your abs. And three, you need the Abs Diet, an easy to follow, delicious meal plan to help you lose the flab. You'll lose the fat rolls guaranteed. You can reduce your waistline, eliminate love handles. And these are the results that I got. And best of all, getting great abs is as easy as one, two, three. Order your Ab Roller three step system today for only $19.99. You'll get the patented ab roller, the abs diet, the abs made easy workout routine, plus an unconditional 60-day money-back guarantee. A total $60 value, yours today, for only $19.99. This is an exclusive TV-only offer and will not be available in any stores. Order now. Order your ab roller today. Just have your credit card ready and call this toll-free number. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. The app roller is only $19.99 plus shipping and handling. Order yours now. Tampa Bay with a 35-27 lead over Detroit. Two touchdowns already here in the second half. But an eight-point lead for the Storm after the missed point after by Boyovic. And now Tampa Bay to kick it off. But one of the things that Coach Tim Martin said he was concerned about was Jake Gruden's ability to scramble and make big plays. And that's exactly what he's done. And again, Tony, different philosophies with these two teams. That's what's so interesting to me is these two coaches 
as Markham is home run, home run, home run, as you take a look at Tim there. On the other hand, Kersey says we get big plays, we get them in different ways, and that last play for the touchdown was a perfect example of that. And not only that play, but the touchdown about before half. Ordinarily, most teams would go with, quote, unquote, the Hail Mary pass. Well, they threw the pal underneath, gave Stevie Thomas a chance to run, and he scored the touchdown 40 yards through. First and 10 for the drive. Crawford made the tackle. That last Tampa Bay scoring drive didn't take very long. Three plays, 42 yards, and 37 of it on the TD toss from Gruden to Willis, and a great block by Thomas to spring him to the zone. First and 10, the ball on the 19-yard line. The France in motion. And again, you have to be so careful football when you think of regular football throwing the ball away. You can't necessarily just throw it away deep, Tony, because you got those darn nets that come bringing it right back in your face. Well, I don't think Sleeve's trying to play. He believes in his receivers. He gives Mullen a chance to make this play. And Mullen gets a hands on it. You get a hand on it, a receiver as good as he is, he's supposed to catch that ball. I, I can recall when I was growing up, my father used to say, if the ball touches your hand, you're supposed to catch the ball. And that's why you have to be so precise because if that ball is just a little bit overthrown, it hits the net. taking a beating. Bowden was right there putting the defensive pressure. What is happening is the Tampa, rather than running cross field with the man-to-man -man with these guys cross field, they're staying in the zone and letting the receivers come to them. Detroit's got to figure out a way to defeat the zone defense with these crossing rounds. 46-yard kick on the Tampa Bay Connects with the field goal. It's 35 30, Tampa Bay. Peeling potatoes can take forever. Oh, no, not with a knife. That's dangerous. Now there's a better way. Introducing Tater Mitts, the innovative new kitchen gloves. Simply rub, and with a few quick strokes, look, just eight seconds of actual time, and presto, a perfectly peeled potato. It's the hassle free way to peel potato. After potato, after potato. You won't believe your eyes. But that's not all because Tater Mitts works well on other vegetables too, like carrots. Or use Tater Mitts to peel fruits, like apples. Uh-oh, you've peeled away half that potato. What a waste. But Tater Mitts removes only the thinnest layer of skin, leaves all the healthy vitamins and minerals with no waste. So go ahead, prepare a batch of potato salad for your next barbecue. Peel potatoes for mounds of fries. Or effortlessly prepare a big bowl of creamy mashed potatoes. The possibilities are endless. 
Tater Mitts works well for all types of potatoes. With Tater Mitts, you can even peel sweet potatoes in a flash, too. Now you can order Tater Mitts for the special TV price of only $19.95. But wait, as a special bonus, we'll send you perfect fries. This innovative slicer makes perfectly cut French fries instantly. Cutting with a knife takes forever. But Perfect Fries surgically sharp stainless steel blades cut easily for uniform fries or your favorite vegetable. And it's yours free. The amazing Tater Mitts and bonus Perfect Fries. A $40 value for only $19.95. Order now. To order Tater Mitts and receive the Perfect Fries cutter absolutely free, call 1-800-952-9500. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus shipping in Hadley too. Tater Mitts, P.O. Box 3012, Wallingford, Connecticut. But for quicker service, call 1-800-952-9500. Novo Boyovic's 46-yard field goal makes it 35-30. The Detroit Drive pulls to within five of the Tampa Bay Storm. And so often in championship games, the buildup is better than the ball game. Well, so far tonight, it has been matched as we have just had a sensational football game. Three scores already here in the third quarter. 35-30 with Tampa Bay to receive now with the lead. Perkins to take it off the net, so the bounce over his head. This is Thomas. He's dangerous. Yeah, you ought to know that. That Stevie Thomas is a heck of, a heck of an athlete. He is doing some outstanding playing. Boyovic, I believe, knocked him out of bounds as Novo then got into the act and took his helmet off and bounced around a little bit. He won't last long with that helmet on. That's a no-no when you're out there on the field. Watch this play. Look for number three to come in your picture in the blue. Yeah. After he's, after he's out of bounds there. Brad Kersey showing he's still agile at 53. Pretty quick feet. First and 10 from the 20 for the score. Leading by Two spots, in fact. Or was that a marker down Jack Baker will tell us. Holding on the offense, number 87. Loss of down, second down. The penalties in arena football, for your first-time viewers, generally half. Everything in this league is generally half. The field goals. The posts are 9 feet wide instead of 18. They are 15 feet high, the crossbar that is, instead of 10. Field is 50 yards instead of 100 yards. And the penalties are cut in half, and you can generally take the yardage that is accumulated throughout a ball game, double it, and compare it to regular football or the NFL. Second down at 15, the ball on the 17 the 14 yard. He completes it. Rambo made the play on Caleb. Brad Caleb out of East Central and State in Oklahoma. Had 22 grabs in the regular season for five touchdowns. Outstanding blocking. You see Eric Anderson trying to come in there, and, and they, made, they made outstanding blocking to allow, to allow Jake Wood an opportunity to throw the ball. Here's Caleb. Seven now at the 23 for Tampa Bay. Complete. Did they get the first down? It appears so. Ron Bridgman made the defensive play. Caleb, the receiver. Again. You've got to give Tampa Bay's offensive line and, and running back a lot of credit because Tampa Bay is bringing the drive in. They're coming full speed. And Gruden's able to stand in the pocket tall and throw the ball because Eric Anderson is putting some pressure on, but they're picking up the play and they're not allowing anybody to penetrate that offensive line. Caleb, back-to-back -back receptions after one in the first half. And now with 3.19 to go in the quarter, it's first and 10 for the 20. Heavy pressure on Gruden, one of the few times tonight. Harris nearly brought him down. Fans are saying he should have been called down as he threw the football away.
Detroit going for the four feet. And they're on the short side with 2.43 to go in the third period. It's 35-30, Tampa Bay. Storm in its first year in Tampa. The old Pittsburgh franchise trying to win its first championship. Running play.
But Tate Randall is all over Darren Woods, and he goes up and makes the catch. That's what you call a great catch. Any kids around there, you saw he used his body, but he caught the ball with his hands. That's an outstanding catch. Darren Willis, 5'11", 180 pounder. He had three catches for 76 yards in the victory over Denver last week. Coming back off a knee injury. Great return man and has turned into a good offensive player as well as a very sound defensive player. First and goal for the four. Willis. Did he cross the goal line in time? I don't think so. It's going to be a second and inches from inside the one yard line. But Detroit's going to win. Mullen, Gary, Gary Mullen's going to have to come up and lay a hit on him. Here he's in the zone. He, he's got to hit. He's got to hit Darren Willis on that play. When you're in the zone, you got to make that guy pay for that ball. As a result, he missed the tackle, and, and, and Darren Willis dropped the ball. But he's got to pay for coming in, in Gary Willis, Gary Mullen's territory. Tampa Bay, thanks to a penalty, has then moved right down the field. Second and goal, Gruden. Touchdown score! Jay Gruden with a TD. He scored twice in the regular season, once here in Detroit. Well, that might be the most important play of the season right there for Tampa Bay. They got the ball in their first series. They experienced a few, a little bit of bad weather, but they were able to bring the ball down and score. And here's a look at it right here. It's, just, it's a quarterback keeper. It's designed for Gruden to take the ball in. They had a, they had a the offensive line stacked to the right, and he just went behind all his strength. So Tampa goes on top. It's Tampa Bay. Illegal procedure on the offense. Head bob on the quarterback, three-yard penalty. Explain the head bob. You don't see that called very often, Tony. Well, what, what has happened in that situation, the, the offensive lineman moved his head up and down, and he caused the defensive, he caused the linebacker to move across the field. The quarterback cannot make any movements to draw or encroach a man offside. So it makes it third and 11. And he is sacked back inside his own 10-yard He finished third in the league in the regular season with eight sacks. Probably quicker than he was in his NFL days. Well, his coach is saying he's playing better than he's ever played, and I think he may have got off the ball a little too quick on that particular play. As you see, Gruden didn't have time to set up, and John Corker was in the backfield and had a sack on him, but he may have been offside. Have an illegal defense by the linebacker. Five yards, first down. Now, what, what a turnaround of plays. Now, here's Corky. You see how quick he is. I mean, even he was off before the ball was even snapped. But a legal defense, a legal setup is, is one of the things that Detroit is very strong in. They've got two outstanding linebackers in Alvin Reddick. And Alvin Reddick is probably lined up in a situation where he was too close to the tackle. You can only get a certain amount of area that you can line up in order to be legal as far as your defense is concerned. You first time arena football watchers. It's a 50 yard field. There is no punting allowed. The walls are in play. And the ball Gruden, who threw for 1,497 yards and 26 touchdowns in the regular season and led the league in completion percentage at 64%. They show a lot of the short stuff, but they've had big plays that have come because of it. On first and 10, incomplete, intended for Stevie Thomas, who's been his main man recently, as Gruden got dumped. Mullen was covering on the play. The rest of the starters on the offensive line, Gizzy is a second-team all-league player. Thomas, red hot a week ago with seven receptions, three touchdowns. Willis, who you just saw in the kick return, and Bowden, who is a bull as a fullback, and one of three fullbacks that Fran Kersey will put into the football game. It is second down and 10, the ball from the 18-yard line of the Tampa Bay Storm. And Detroit stops that play as Tate Randall, a first-team All-League player out of Texas Tech, makes the tackle. Randall and crew, an outstanding defensive bunch. Corker, as we mentioned, the league defensive lineman of the year. Randall, an all-league player, and it goes on. Mullen was a second-team choice in the secondary. William McClay, a good two-way player as well. And Bruce Clark, a late-season addition, has given him strength up front. Third down and seven, the ball at the 21-yard line, and we'll have a flag. David Evans jumped off sides. going to be a ball bounces off of them as are the Nets at the end of the field. Incomplete off the hands of Anthony Howard. Mullen was covering on the play on a first and 10 for the 22. And by the way, another thing that you're not used to if you haven't watched arena ball, that gentleman gets to keep that football. 
thanks to Spalding, every ball that goes in the stands becomes a souvenir, just Tampa, like baseball. Tampa Bay ran an excellent route. They ran what you call a crossing route. They sent Anthony Howard in motion all the way to the opposite side of the field, and he ran a crossing pattern, and Gruden missed the pass. He doesn't normally do that, does that. He throws for 61% of his pass, and he has to connect in order for them to be successful. Second and 10 for Gruden. Plenty of time. He got good protection. Underthrown. Looking for Thomas in the vicinity. Well, actually, for Tracy Perkins. Rand Kersey, 9 and 2. First year back in coaching after eight years out of the business. Former head coach at Kentucky. Once at the University of Tampa. The AD there as recently as 1989. And Tim Markham, the winningest coach in arena football, 30 and 7, has never lost in a championship game. He's going for his fourth title. He's won two in Detroit and one in Denver. Well, Gruden's one for four for three yards. He's got to improve on that statistic. Third and ten. Gruden deep. And it is complete inside the five-yard line to Darren Willis out of Arizona State. Randall makes the tackle. First and goal inside the five for the storm. And that's why Darren Willis is the best athlete on their ball club. He runs a corner pattern. The Detroit Drive was going for its fourth straight championship with only the Tampa Bay Storm standing in the way. I'm Fred Hickman, and this is ESPN Classics countdown of arena football greatest games. Drive quarterback Arch Schleister did his part by passing for five touchdowns, but was it enough to take home the trophy? After the game here on Classic, don't miss Russell Athletic ESPN Arena Football Monday live tonight on ESPN2. presents Arena Bowl 91. Tonight from Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, Michigan, the three-time defending champion Detroit Drive hosts the Tampa Bay Storm. Novo Bojovic will kick it off. Veteran kicker for the drive and Darren Willis on the return. He has returned one for a touchdown in the regular season and averaged 23.8 yards per kick return. We're ready for the 50-yard indoor war in the Arena Bowl. Willis from 9, 8 deep in the end zone to the 10. And good field position for the Storm as they get the football out to the 13-yard line. John Corker, the lineman of the year in the league, made the tackle. Here is Jay Gruden to lead him on the field offensively for the Storm. 